We're on the beat with Tony Brewing and we have Tyler Bryant here. Uh, who's oh, at, uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, Tyler is uh, one of the latest uh, young guitar players to go play with Jeff Beck on tour. Actually, probably the youngest to ever tour with him. Okay, so uh, Tyler, you have been playing since you were six years old. Yeah, I got a guitar when I was six. And first by Elvis in first grade and was obsessed from then on. So. I met this guy when I was 11 years old named Roosevelt Twitty in the music store. Who was just sitting there playing this Lightning like, Hopkins style guitar. And as soon as I heard him, I was obsessed with the guitar and the music and the blues. And then you know, as I got older, I started listening to bands like the Black Crows and the Rolling Stones and the rest is history. And you've, you've put this band together uh, for how long now? You're, you're just about to play Lee's Palace, right? Yeah, we're here at Lee's Palace in Toronto, and we've been the band for about three years now. So. Okay, uh, but recently you did a tour with Jeff Beck as opening for Jeff. Yeah, we played, I'm pretty sure it was Massey Hall. Massey Hall here in yeah. Toronto. I myself saw you in Kitchener, which was a phenomenal audience. Yeah. That was awesome. I mean, that was an awesome tour and a great experience for me too. Because growing up, he was always like my favorite guitarist. So it was cool to, just to get to watch him play every night. And, you know, get to watch him sound check. And did Did you actually home. ever get to like pull him off to the side and hey, like, yeah, show I, me how you do that? No, I never. I never like pushed for that kind of stuff. But like, there were definitely times where we would be backstage sitting there with guitars. I would just knock on his dressing room door and say, hey, is there a right come in and, you know, listen and, yeah. What, what did you pick up of his style? Because he has, doesn't play with a pick. Yeah. What did you pick up from that? Well, it's not, not a lot of things that I incorporate into my, into my show, just because, oh, you know, I, I, I don't want people to know what he's trying to be Jeff, you know, because the cool thing about Jeff is there's no one like him, you know, and that he's like no one else, you know, and so, I mean, I think the main thing I picked up from him is just to kind of push the limits and, you know, not do the same thing that everyone else is doing. I mean, there's a million kids running around these rats, and on that tour, he asked me to play acoustic, and so I kind of figured out a way to play an acoustic and an amp and distortion, and I think, you know, that could be part of the reason we hit it off so well, because that was something that... I don't think an opener had done for him yet, so. And you normally don't play an acoustic. That was a surprise for you. you yeah, I mean, well, you surprise everybody, I actually. I had to get one for that tour, so. But it, it worked out great, you know? I learned a lot from Jeff, and I actually got Fender to send me one of those Jeff Beck signature guitars. And so, I would uh, I'd keep that in my hotel room at night, and I'll always try to learn it, and just for fun. And you also have been playing, like, you, you played something in Chicago, Eric Clapton put together? Uh, I played the Crossroads Festival. I played on the side stage, like, early in the morning. I was 13 years old, so it was cool. I got to, like, say hey to Clapton. That was actually the first time I saw Jeff. So it was really cool. Yeah. And, and where are you taking it from here? You, you obviously have a CD out. I, I see it in the back here in the merchandising. Yeah, I mean, we've got, a, we've got an EP out called My Radio. We've got a CD called From the Sandcastle, and we're working on our first full length right now out in Oxford, Mississippi, with this guy named Dennis Henry, who's done like, all kinds of cool stuff. He did Buddy Guy's Sweet Tea record. He did I, I had a rumor somehow that Bob Rock was going to produce well, you. See, that was the original plan, but we couldn't work out our time schedules to where like, we'd be in the same city for long enough. And so we met this guy in Mississippi, who he's done like he did this new math record that I love and he did uh, Counting Crows and Buddy Guys so he's done like the modern and the old blues stuff which I love because like we, we really just don't want to make a blues record we want to make like a, a rock record that has blues influence but something that kids our age can relate to you know because that's I mean like with rock and roll these days, still the biggest rock bands are rock bands from years ago. There's not like a lot of us. Yeah, now, now where's the guy like you being in your age bracket 
come up with this stuff. Like you're playing stuff that Carlos Santana way back and, and guys like that were playing. And they all took it from the blues players, which you were influenced at a young age. Yeah, so I, mean, I took it from those guys too. I mean, I was my mentor was going to Twitty, and I just started going to his house every day and listening to music with him. And, uh, yeah. And now, relating to the bands of the 70s and 80s, what's your feeling on guys like Jimmy Page? What, do you, do you uh, listen to his style? Can you, can you relate to what he took things from? Because, yeah. I mean, a rumor. I kind of just love music. I love everything. So, so in your songs, well, well, in your songs, do you interpret the blues in the same way that the these 70s and 80s guys interpret it? I don't really know. Man. It just kind of happens. When, when I'm, so your music comes from your feeling of it? Yeah, and what you grew up with. I mean, with, with my songwriting, I, it's sort of like I, I sit there and it normally starts with drums or with a guitar riff or, you know, like a lyrical idea that I have. And, it, you know, whether it takes 30 minutes or a month, once the song's finished, I kind of don't know how it happened. And it's just like a really organic process that just sort of happens. And before you know it, the song is there. So it's not really, I'm, I'm not thinking like, how do I get these influences in there? I think the influences are kind of built into just you. Just sporadically so they, they, it comes they, out. Yeah, they kind of just ooze out into their song. Have I mean, you ever thought of some lyrics and then suddenly the next morning he's like, what did I just, what did I do? Yeah, well, thank God for iPhones. You can just record them down into your phone now. So yeah. you'll see me walking around with my phone just being like, oh, okay. Oh, so in the, the modern technology has helped yeah, with your totally. with your writing. Absolutely. Wow. So what do you expect uh, tonight's audience to be like? I mean, last time you were here was Massey Hall. Yeah, uh, which was great. It was sold out, Massey Hall. Yeah, I, I couldn't even get to it. I had to come to Kitchener, but I, yeah. I was glad I came to Kitchener. Yeah, almost every show on the tour was, was sold out, which is awesome. And so we've been going around hitting all these tiny clubs, and people have been coming out, which has been awesome. Because you know? we've, we've never toured up here as a band before, because I was just doing acoustic on that tour. So it's cool that people have been coming out. Some markets have been slower than others, but some of them have been pretty rocking. So. And you moved to Nashville recently? Or? Well, I, I moved out when I was 17, and I just turned 21 a few weeks ago. So. So you've been living there, so obviously a lot of songwriters and seminars going on there all the time. Yeah. You must have a heavy influence. Yeah, well, you know, I moved down there just to write songs, and then I met Caleb, the drummer, and he liked all the same music I did. He knew Calvin. About a week later, we went on tour. So we went on tour with Ario Speedwagon. That was our first tour. Yep. But uh, I moved there to write songs, and, you know, I did a publishing deal with Sony. So I write songs for them whenever I'm not on the road. I mean, I love writing country music. I love writing pop music. You know, anything. It's just I love. Yeah, and and some of your influences have been people like Tom Petty. I noticed the Tom Petty hat. That's yeah, that's yeah. excellent. <laughs> I love Tom Petty, man. Whenever I first, he was like one of the guys that really inspired me to start writing songs. You know, because I used to think that lyrics and vocal melodies were just wasting time making guitar solos. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> You know, then I started listening to guys like Tom Petty and even, you know, even the Stones and the Black Crows, they had these great lyrics and they were just, they were writing lyrics that people could relate with. They, they still had these, um, these bluesy rock influence. Now, what about music videos? Have you planned any videos with a, with a real story to it? Uh, yeah, I haven't yet. We did, we did one video for um, our song Say a Prayer off the front of the Sandcastle record that uh, we did with this amazing guy named Ben Rinchen. And so he, he and I kind of, we did that, and it was really fun. But yeah, I haven't really, I haven't really started doing that in the next record yet. But I think it's gonna be very interesting, because we have a couple songs that could be really cool. So, and I actually, um, I've been playing guitar on this new movie that should be coming out very soon. I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about it yet, but. But you were in the movie, uh, Rock Prophecies. Prophecies, yeah, yes. back in 2009. I was in that, yeah. What I've been doing, I played guitar on the soundtrack for this new movie that's coming out. It's going to be theaters everywhere. And uh, I, can we expect it at the Toronto Film Festival, or is it going to become out before September? I mean, if um, it, I'm not really sure when it comes out. I think it's like June or July. Oh, uh, okay, it won't be the Toronto Film Festival, yeah. because that, that's a huge it festival. It should be at all the local movie theaters. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Well, we'll keep an eye out. Yeah. So, wait, you can't mention the name, but I'm not we'll, sure if I can or not. But but, but you did the sound music videos and uh, that the director probably, of that film is mentioning doing our next music video. Oh well, that's he's a massive director. That would be great because movie directors really know how to put a story together, and which is what videos are lacking these yeah. days. I feel like our our next album is going to be kind of like a story. It's kind of got the ups and downs and. And that's the way she, albums like should be. Movie, you know, yeah, so. well, Pink Floyd, look at the dark side of the moon. I mean, phenomenal. Okay, well, we've been speaking to Tyler Vine. Is there anything you'd like to say to uh, your audience here in Toronto? <laughs> okay, well, we're going we're gonna to cut to a couple of songs. I'm, I'm going to shoot something here. Okay. So we'll, we'll add some. Okay. Sweet tangerine 